While everybody's having a fantastic time at Dayton Hamvention, I'm home dealing with my wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Now, a happy Saturday, everybody. And uh, while everybody's turkey enjoying... Huh? We have a turkey yep. in the oven. Yep, got a turkey in the oven. Why not, right? Turkey in the oven with my famous Brussels sprouts uh, marinated in basil-infused olive oil, some herbs, some roasted red tomatoes, Yummy. and some other stuff. Bacon on top. Anyways, um... So I spent the day working on my 23 centimeter Yagi and the cat, Gary, has been sitting here looking. She lives under this tripod, right? She's got a fascination with antennas. Let's see. Anyways, <clears throat> here's what I have here. It's a lazy cat who wants to play. Hi, Kay. <laughs> hey, Kay. All right. So um, I finished 3D printing. Okay. This is what I have so far. I told you in the last video, I was going to change the boom. So I got a square aluminum boom, okay? Every one of those pieces are 3D printed. Took about, well, I'll get to that in a second. I even 3D printed some orange end caps. Look at that, huh? Pretty neat. And um, let's go over this. So for the calculator, okay, for my 23 centimeter Yagi, I used an online calculator, DL6WU. Okay, if you, if you Google 3G Aerial DL6W, you're going to find it. And this is very, very specific at this frequency, okay? You can see I was just drawing lines because it took me a while. I had to tape measure on there. Boy, I, the whole side of that boom was marked up. I wanted to make sure that this is, you know, as accurate as possible. Now, what you do with this, this calculator is you enter the frequency manually, or you could pick, you know, GMRS, UHF, VHF. And you pick the element diameter and you pick the boom diameter, okay? And the number of elements. And it, it spit out seven foot seven and three sixteenths of an inch boom, which I have an eight inch boom or eight foot boom, and gain approximately 19.2 dBi. That's decibels relative to an isotropic radiator, I think. Um, I, you know why I say I think? Because you guys on YouTube don't miss a beat, man. If I'm wrong, I'm an asshole. That's, I'm, I'm not going to bleep that out there. That's what you guys will tell me. Then I got to delete your comments because, you know, I'm a, a this word and a that word. Decibels related to an isotropic radiator. But I'm, I'm doing this as a flat, linear, direct feed dipole. Okay? Um, so the reflector length and then dipole length, right? And you could do this in two ways on the calculator. You could put in, um, you know, uh, uh, a, a, a regular, full, you know, dipole split fed, you know, 50 ohm. Or you can do a full dipole, which is a 300 ohm, which you would use like a four to one ballon or whatever. You could do, I might change that. When I plugged in full dipole versus regular fed dipole, the numbers are about the same. Okay, so I just left it like this for simplicity. Now, and then every one of these length director one director two all the way i printed this out of course that's why you're looking at it at, um all the way to 28 so it's a 30 element okay now the for, you know the uh, the length of let's let's go like this direct uh, director one the length is three and 15 16th of an inch and then a one a 30 second so I think that's because, you know, the boom correction for the size and diameter of the boom is already calculated, but I think that's because I don't know if there's anything between 15th, 16th, and a 32nd, you know what I mean? So I think they add that. Now, then it'll show you the position from reflector to the director one. Reflector to director two. It'll show you the distance and, and, and that, okay? So what I had to do was I had to, if you look on the side of this boom here, all right, I put markings everywhere, okay? So basically from center of the the rod, the aluminum rod, which I ordered aluminum rod and end caps, they'll be here tomorrow. Um, I could have used round aluminum tube. I used aluminum rod. Uh, it's four or six millimeter. I can't remember what I ordered, but it, it made sense when I was ordering it. That's what matters. Um, so, you know, here we go. Reflector and then driven element, which is... You know, the spacing is closer, and I had to use, like, where is it? There it is. See? 
So I, I 3D printed all these. This one, for some reason, is a little bit bigger. I'm not sure why. That one slides. These all kind of snap on. So I'm going to hit it with just a drop of epoxy, like this, right? And line it up with the, the marking I made so that the center of the element is in the center of that gully there, that little round part. So the reflector, driven element, and then director one, director two. And here's fun fact time. What I've learned uh, about this on a 23 centimeter Yagi, what happens is, of course, you have the spacing together with the reflector, driven element, first director, right? But then, the sp uh, Michelle even noticed this, the spacing is closer, and then it gets farther, then it gets closer a little bit, and then it stays that way. So follow along. When I've made Yagis before, like the, even the commercially made high gain on the side of the house there, or or this one, the element spacing is the same from one end to the other. The director length uh, have changed. However, on this antenna from this calculator, a shorter, you know, a shorter uh, spacing, it starts to get wider, then it gets shorter, and then it stays the same. So that is uh, pretty interesting. Didn't, didn't know that, I learned that. By the way, if you're wondering about our beautiful table out here, I mean, this thing is the oldest thing on this entire property. This set's about 120 years old, and I told my wife about nine years ago I would sandblast and paint this. Sandblast and paint it. And you can see how much I've gotten done on it. So this thing is an antenna holder is what I told her. It's an antenna holder so and, and a cat shield. So <laughs> I know you guys keep seeing this, but, man, she is mad. That should have been done years ago. Anyways, that's, that's old, right? So that is what you're looking at. Tomorrow's video is going to be with, uh, I'm going to start trimming. I actually got a lot of work to do tomorrow. I got a few things to do around the house and, and this and that. Um, so I'm going to start, you know, I ordered, basically what I'm into on this project is about 80 bucks. That's about 35 bucks for the boom. That's about, uh, a hundred, maybe a hundred grams of 3D print out of a thousand gram roll, which costs 24 bucks. So $2 and 40 cents of plastic that I've PLA plus that I've used. Um, let's see, what else am I into this? The calculator was free, although I do pay for internet fiber every month. Some Gorilla Epoxy, two part. So I could just put a dab on there and mount those element uh, insulators. And the elements and protective caps cost about 30 bucks so i'm about 80 bucks into this tomorrow i should have a lot of the elements measured and attached while the cat sits here and sleeps and um let's see what else then i gotta work on the feed point now i'm, I'm a little concerned about this because the spacing right i used i didn't run out of black i just decided to switch to orange for the end cap so i don't know why but it looked pretty cool and I thought this was going to be green, but when I switched from black to green, there's the end of the black, uh, even though I fleshed it out. So um, that is exactly as I modified this uh, 3D print, you know, stencil or what do you call it? The, the G code or the, uh, you know, whatever I did in the software, I modified this to be like this smaller. Okay. And right there. So it's going to be reflector driven. Well, once I fasten them, director one, director two, director three, all right? And um, tomorrow I should have the aluminum solid rod. I didn't go tube, I went rod. And uh, this thing is not that heavy, look. I mean, it is not heavy at all. So once I mark all those, I'm gonna hit them with a little bit of a dab of epoxy to keep them on there, instead of using screws and doing all that. That is gonna be my 23 centimeter, 1296. Um, 30 element Yagi, which is only an eight foot antenna. If this works good, maybe I'll make some more and sell them off. Who knows? I doubt it. I don't want to sell anything, but, but hey, if this works, it'll be my first ever 12, uh, 1296 antenna ever made. It'll be the first ever completely, almost completely homemade Yagi and my first ever contact and EME moon bounce on 23 centimeters. Um, you know, when I get my 9700 back one day, 
when I can afford one. I will uh, be using this terrestrial, but this will be, this is, will double as the first contact ever made on 1296 for me and the first ever EMU moon bounce, which will be right there when I try it. It goes right there and we're going to see what happens. So enjoy Dayton Hamvention as I sit here and clean the pool and shouldn't have made this antenna. I should have worked on this table set, but <laughs> seven, three, everybody.